Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about voltage. Uh, volts, I find a lot of times with this unit people have heard the language before. So you've heard of voltage, you've heard of amps, you've heard of all that kind of stuff, current and, and charge, but we don't necessarily know exactly what it means. So today you're going to learn about voltage. Um, okay, to start with, batteries. So I want you to sketch this diagram um, in your notes there. Um, so this is a diagram of a very simple circuit, and we've got a battery here. Now batteries have a positive end and a negative end, uh, which are labeled here on the um, on the diagram here. This, this diagram also has a switch, so the switch here just turns things on and off. Um, and you'll see the arrows here. So the arrows indicate the electrons. So they are the electrons moving around the circuit. And this is electricity. Remember, electricity is simply a stream of electrons, a current of electrons. Um, and they're moving through the circuit past the light bulb. And this is what's causing the light bulb to light up here, of course. Um, so if you'll notice, the electrons are moving in the circuit because of this, so this positive charge here, we know the, uh, the law of attraction, we know that positives and negatives like each other. So these negatives that are collecting here, they want to get all the way around and get near that positive end. They're very attracted to it. So this is a circuit. Uh, this would be how batteries work, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. Now we're going to relate this to lightning. So uh, I want you to do a little sketch here of lightning as well. Um, the positive ground is pulling the negatives down from the clouds. So we've got the negatives here, and that positive tree here, the high point on the ground, is yanking those electrons down from the sky. Um, so much the same oops, as the circuit, right? This positive here is pulling the electrons. The positive here is pulling the electrons. So, so this is how um, these charges work. This is how electricity works. Um, Okay, so why do electrons move in a circuit? That's what we just discussed, right? It's very similar to how lightning works. Um, there's a, In your notes here, there's a few fill in the blank things that you need to show here. But let's just take a look at this diagram here. So we've got our negative end here, and we've got the electrons then moving around this circuit. So going all the way around because they're attracted to that positive end there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, a couple words to fill in here. An excess of electrons accumulate at one terminal of a battery, making it negatively charged. So that's this, oops, ah, I pressed the wrong button here. Sorry, guys. Um, that's this end here. That is the negatively charged end. Um, at the same time, electrons withdraw from the other terminal. So they're, they're leaving from the other terminal. Um, and this leaves that end positively charged. So this end here is going to be positively charged there. Um, this, the electrons want to move. So now they have energy and they want to move. Uh, they want to leave the negative end because they want to get close to that positive end. So this is why the electrons move. This is how we can capture the energy uh, for electricity. These are how circuits work. Okay, now the energized electrons now have the ability to do work on something else. So when they do work, that's how we would see electricity. Um, this would be such as lighting a bulb or heating a burner there. Um, so whenever that happens, that's the electrons doing work on something. Um, so the electrical energy stored in a battery is called electrical potential energy. So you can copy that down there, electrical potential energy. So the term potential difference, um, this is also a fill in the blank, means the difference in potential energy per coulomb of charge at one point in the circuit compared to the potential energy at another point in the circuit. So if we look here, um, this positive end here has high potential. This negative end has low potential. And the difference between those, now remember in math, when you talk about the word difference, that is a subtraction, okay? So if I took the high potential and I subtracted the low potential, that is called the potential difference. This is also known as our voltage here. So the difference between those two things, that's linked to our voltage. Okay, now um, 
we've got this little chart to fill in here. So we've got three symbols now. Uh, so we took our current um, formula the other day. So now we can look at voltage. So energy, first of all, E. So that is all, energy always has the symbol E, so you can get used to that. The unit for that is joule. Um, so the capital J there. Uh, charge, we've seen that one before, that's Q. And the unit that we're going to use is capital C, which is our coulombs. Now, potential difference, that's voltage, okay? So um, sometimes you'll hear it, um, people will just call it voltage. So potential difference and voltage are the same thing. Uh, the symbol V uh, unit is also V, and that's for either volts, you can put here too, volts, or um, the official way of describing it would be joules per second, okay? But that's volts. Um, okay, now our formula for this is V equals E over Q. So you can write this down, V equals E over Q. Uh, I'm going to give you the little triangle thing here, if, again, if you have trouble rearranging the formula here. So we're going to go V equals E over Q, and I'll just show you again if we were to rearrange something. So let's say we're solving for E. If I ask you to solve for E, what you're gonna do, you're gonna cover up the E, and then what's left over? V multiplied by Q, right? So then the formula for energy, if I were to rearrange that, energy equals V times Q. Now, you can also figure that out just using the algebra here which I will do back on here. So if I want to solve for E here, I got to get rid of that Q. So I'm going to multiply each side by Q. And now this one's canceled and I have V times Q on the other side. So either way, obviously the algebra is always going to give you the right answer. The, the triangle thing will too. Again, use whatever method you want. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Now, voltmeter, you can copy this definition down here. A voltmeter is an instrument used to measure the potential difference between two points in a circuit. So it's, it's used to measure the voltage um, in a circuit. So, so um, this instrument, when you see it in diagrams, and we're going to be doing circuits uh, right away here, not today's lesson, but next one, um, this is what you'll see as voltage. Remember the other day uh, we learned an M, M meter is this one, right? So a voltage is same deal, but instead of the A, now we're looking at a V. So copy that down in your notes there. Okay, we're gonna work through a couple examples here. Um, so again, we've got a three variable, um, a three variable equation. So we've got V equals E over Q. So we've got V, E and Q. These are three variables and always a good idea to write your variable list down the side as you're doing these problems. And that's what you would have learned probably in various math classes. Um, it's just a good way to organize your material and keep things all together. Okay, so we've got 20 joules of work. So when we talk about work, that means energy. So right away, 20 joules goes here are required to transfer three coulombs of charge. So that's going to be our Q value there. Oops, and it's coulombs. So three coulombs. So I've got 20 joules and I've got three coulombs. Um, what is the difference in potential? So you're going to see this phrase differently. So difference in potential, potential difference, voltage, those all, all those things are going to mean the same thing. So don't get tricked by that. <laughs> Excuse me. So what is the difference in potential between these two points? So our equation is V equals E over Q. So I'm just going to sub in my values. E is 20 joules. Cool. Um, sorry, uh, charge is 3 coulombs. And I get an answer of 6.67. And the unit I'm going to use is volts. So 6.67 volts for that one. And that's your answer. There, you're done. OK, next question here. The potential difference between the two terminals on a battery is 7 volts. How much work energy is required to transfer 15 coulombs of charge across the terminals? Um, so again, we've got E, we've got Q and uh, we have uh, V. So I'm looking here, the potential difference, so this time it tells me the potential difference right away, 
is seven volts. So seven volts. Um, let's see what else we know. We've got to, it's required to transfer 15 coulombs of charge. So 15 C here. And the question, how much work or how much energy? So that's my question mark there. So you would always write your equation out uh, nor how we are used to seeing it normally. So voltage equals E over Q. Um, now we're looking for E. So if we go back to our triangle if we cover up the e we're left with v times q so e equals v multiplied by q and so we have 7 volts multiplied by 15 coulombs of charge and my answer is 105 and the unit for this is going to be joules so 105 joules and that's it, you're just filling in, uh, you're just reading the question carefully. That's kind of gonna be the hardest part for some of these. Um, work, you can do now the worksheet on potential difference calculations, much like the current ones. So I've included the answer key for you. Um, so try a couple, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, and that's about it for today. Thanks guys.